Joe Gatto. Uh, thank you. Hey, guys. Hey, it's hey, always everybody. good to see you around. Thanks so much for having me. This is unbelievable. It's like a dream come true, man. Well, absolutely. Look, I got goosebumps. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see my, yeah, my yes, goosebumps please. or my yeah. nipples. Which one <laughs> Let's start with the goosebumps. You know what? Uh, it's just... You, you and the guys, you, most of you have been good friends for a long time, right? Yeah, we met in uh, high school in Staten Island, Monsignor Farrow, freshman year, 1990. And you all decided, you know, you played around in the hallways. You could actually perform for people that, and get to know people through just being fun and funny. Yeah. And yeah. so how did you guys get started together? We did uh, we did improv after we all went to different colleges. In 99, we formed our improv comedy troupe, The Tenderloins. Right. And then we started doing live improv in uh, New York to sold out. Uh, <laughs> twenty person black box theaters. <laughs> <Something>. that's, that's <laughs> we were crushing. Sold out though. It's sold out. Well, yeah. Well, you know, my family, I'm a big Italian family. Half of it's full because my mom and her friends came. Of course. But <laughs> <laughs> how did you start on the practical joking? Well, that was just actually by not having girls in the high school. I right. mean, that's how you pass time. <laughs> but, uh, you're a bunch, of, you're a bunch of geeks. Yeah, that's it. But we uh, we had tried a couple concepts for television that didn't work. We had a sketch comedy show that mm -hmm. uh, went to pilot uh, and didn't go to series, and then eventually we were like all right, let's do what we do. And this embarrassment comedy is what we've always done. Like, I've always made these guys cringe in elevators and everything. It's like what we really did. So this right. is really us. You're just getting to peek in. And the show is more about friendship than at anything. It's just, everybody always says, like, oh, I do the same exact thing. You guys stole our idea. I'm like, we're just being friends. I mean, that's what it is. So for uh, anyone who's listening right now who really wants to kind of liven up their next gathering or people in the office are kind of boring them to death, what is like a, a quick just add water and stir practical joke you can play on people. A close talking is always a winner. Like, like getting right, right getting to the right face. Up, get right up on, the, on them when they're there. Especially if you have yeah. pink eye. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's the danger zone. That's a lot of fun. We do a thing called nosing, too, where you have to try to get your nose on people <laughs> without them noticing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm really well equipped because my nose is huge. You have, but to, you have to have a camera rolling for that. Uh, no, it's it's actually just as fun if just one person's watching because they're trying not to laugh as you just have your nose rested on them. I like to doing it. Like if we were talking to each other right, right now, right. I would love if Scary did it to you because then I would be watching Scary trying to hold a straight face. Don't you think about it. Well, <laughs> he did for a minute. So nosing. Nosing's yeah. a good time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this would be a really good team building exercise at corporations as well. Like we'll take your team out to lunch and... And then one person at the restaurant has to nose somebody else, yeah. some stranger. Well, we always do fake things in our show, of course, and we taught team building once. That was one of our challenges in the show. And these people came in from this company that we found that wanted to play ball, and we just did team acting exercise, and we made everybody lay on the floor and just roll over, and we called it the friendship burrito, and they were just flipping over and rolling over each other. Yeah. And let me remind you, this is how he makes his yeah, living. That's right. yeah. he's, a, he's supporting his family. That's it. Do you ever sit there and come up with the most ridiculous idea and go, this will never work, and then it, it totally works? Yeah, there's, there's sometimes where, I mean, the biggest part about the show that we love is that the general public is like the secret sauce, because they're game for so much more than you thought. Yeah. Half the time you think you're going to get punched or something, but they're like, no, I'll go in the bathroom with you, and they're just like, <laughs> they're just walking, like, they'll, you know, eat stuff out of your hand. It's crazy. Has there anyone, has there ever been violence? Has anyone ever come after you No, guys? our show really is about making the us look like the idiots, like an inverted prank show where the right. joke's on us, so it, it doesn't really get there. For the most part, people just think we're crazy, and we do it in New York City, so everybody thinks we're nuts anyway. So. Yeah, you knew you'd kind of fit right in. Yeah, yeah. there's been yeah. a couple things, like people haven't been happy, <laughs> really. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Is it true? I heard that for a punishment once, the other guys had to go get a tattoo. Yeah, it's true. And they were not allowed to see what the tattoo was yeah. until they left the party. Yeah, I won. They lost. It was a three-way tie. How so do you... It's... I would say no. I'm not doing that. Well, Tattoos are permanent, Joe. Yeah, well, it's the first permanent punishment. That's how I sold it. But we're, the, we're, the, we're all friends, so there's always a line, and I put it on their thighs for the most part. <laughs> you did? Sal's got Jaden Smith, a portrait of Jaden Smith on his thigh. Oh, <laughs> 16-year-old Jaden Smith, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. That is awful. Uh, and Jaden Smith saw it. We were at Comic-Con, and Jaden Smith walked. He was talking to M. Night Shyamalan, and we saw him, and I was like, oh, you got to go tell, show Jaden your tattoo. So Sal ran over and showed it to Jaden Smith, and he flipped out, and he was like, this is unreal. What is happening? <laughs> it's a really good likeness. It, I'm looking at it oh, online see, right now. It's yeah. unbelievable, yeah. Needles did it down on... Uh, <laughs> Eastside Inc. I think. My God. There's so many things we could be doing. Curing cancer. We could be teaching kids. Well, you're, make, you're making people laugh and making them uh, hold their road rage in when they're in traffic. No, Joe, <laughs> is that is that really your answer? If any, if, if someone came down and said, look at you, you bum. All you do is sit around acting funny and stupid all day. What is your comeback to them? Because there is an importance to what you do for a living. Yeah, and I think you learn that um, when you realize how many people you touch with the show. Like, we have these meet and greets after our live shows where we'll have people come in. And it's, we, I always tell the story. There was a grandmother 
a mother and a daughter came in. So it was three generations, and they watched the show together. And the mother was like, "This is the only way I connect with my 16 year old yeah, daughter." So like, you thank you so much. Like, it, it really is great. And you get people through like hospital visits and all this stuff. You hear all these crazy stories. How you make them remember how to laugh, and that really is touching. Mm. So, Joe, I know that uh, two things that are near and dear to your heart are uh, bullying. Yep. Not that you like it. Well, anti-bullying. Anti-bullying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big into bullying. I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, everyone should give it a try. Yeah, every chance least, I get. At least once. <laughs> I, I, was, I made the bullies laugh in high school. That was it. I was, there was this guy, Rocco Lorenzano, a big football player, and, uh, you know, he knocked my books out of my hand or whatever, and I said, pick them up or there's going to be a problem, big guy. And he busted out laughing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God, you know, because I meant it as a joke. Yeah. And then it, this weird reverse bullying thing happened my junior year where I was picking on all the football players. I was a mathlete. <laughs> so, and I was, like, I was like picking them all up. They would, they would clear the table when I sat down. Like, it was really, everybody had fun with it, and it just brought together a bunch of people in our high school. That's and excellent. we have a really tight school. So. Well, good for you, Joe. We're so proud of you. Thank you so much. Look Thanks at you. Me. We're going to come borrowing money from you pretty soon. <laughs> you have a goal microphone. You're doing fine. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know you've made it when your microphone turns gold. Yes, you right. know, it's from the halitosis. <laughs> uh, okay, so a second night going on sale for Radio City Music Hall. Uh, please, Impractical Jokers on True TV, fifth season beginning uh, early next year in January, I do believe, right? July? Starts with a J. No, for the next season is February. No, yeah, it doesn't start with a J at all. That's the <laughs> oh, oh, my notes say January. Someone's losing their job. Uh -oh. Oh, I know you're right. It's January. It's January. Okay. <laughs> we'll come on early so no one loses their job. But then the cruise. Come on the cruise. The, there's the cruise. There's Let's the, go. There's the bus. It's going to hit Ohio next week. Lots of comedy in Ohio. Yeah. Us. <laughs> They're listening to us right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Joe Gatto. Thank you guys for having me. Come back to see us.